Before we begin, I need to give you the following disclaimer. This video is strictly for educational purposes only and does not show you how to illegally download the Coffin of Andy and Lele. In this video, I will use the game files from my lawfully purchased copy of the game from Steam, only to emulate the game on a mobile device. I will teach you how to emulate the game on your phone as well, but I am not giving you any of the game files. You will need to get the game files yourself by legally purchasing the game from Steam and supporting the developers. I repeat, I am not sharing the game files, get them yourself by buying the game legally. This tutorial is not about piracy, but it is about taking a legal copy of a game and emulating it on your mobile device for you to play, which is fully legal. Keep in mind that the emulator app we will use in this video only works on Android devices. The specific model of the Android device that you have doesn't matter. If it runs Android, then it will work. If you have an iPhone or an iPad, you're out of luck, since the emulator that we will use for this video doesn't work on these devices yet. Also, for this video, I'll be using the Bluestacks Android player instead of a physical Android device, since I use an iPhone and I don't have any Android running phones to use for this video. And now, let's begin. All right, so for starters, we're gonna need to have a computer ready to use. You'll only need a computer just for the initial installation part only and the once you install the game you can just play it on your phone and you don't need a computer or any other device to play. You can directly just emulate the game on your phone. After you have a computer make sure that you have purchased the Coffin of Andy and Lele on Steam lawfully. And for the last thing, you'll also need some uh, software that can create zip files or archives. For this, I'm going to use WinRAR. Please make sure that you have at least 600 megabytes of storage on your mobile device or whatever you're trying to install Tikal onto first because you'll need quite a lot of storage to run this game and to install it. Okay, so first of all, we're going to open up Steam over here. We are going to need to first go to our library and get the lawfully purchased game. We're going to right click, we're going to go to manage and go to browse local files. Once you have opened up the game files, I want you just in case you modded the game. If you have modified the game files in any way, shape or form, you'll have to reinstall the game or otherwise make a backup and then reinstall it just so you can get the fresh files from Steam again. Again. So I think I have modded my game installation for videos that I have made. So I'm gonna quickly select everything in here and just delete it. After this, I'm gonna go again in here and I'm just gonna select uninstall. And as you can see, the game was fully uninstalled. It does not show up in the common folder and in my Steam installation. So now we're just gonna install it again. So I'm gonna click on install right here and I'm gonna download it to my Windows. And now we're just gonna wait a couple of seconds until it downloads. So I have a pretty good internet connection, so this shouldn't take long. Let me say this again, if you haven't modified the game files in any way, shape or form, you do not need to re-download. I'm only doing this because I have modded the game previously for videos that I have done on this channel, so I have to reinstall it. And now that the game was successfully installed, we have the folder again with the official files. Now we can close out of Steam and only keep the files open, we don't need to use the game on Steam. The second step that we need to do is installing the patches JSON. There is a JSON file which includes a bit of patching to the game's framework to allow the game to run on a mobile device. Because we're trying to emulate the game on a mobile device instead of a computer, uh, this requires a bit of library patching to make sure that the game understands the new environment that it's running in. So to patch the game, you're gonna have to go to the link in the description and download this text file over here. This is just a JSON file, which is basically just a simple uh, text file that is in the JSON format. So we're gonna go to www in the game folder and we're gonna click on this. And after that, we're gonna drag the JSON file that we downloaded and put it in here. Remember, you want to put this in the www folder, not in the main Tcol game folder. After this, we can go back to Tcol and then we can go back to common in the Steam library folder. Now we're gonna prepare an archive of the game files themselves. Actually, we're gonna go back into this. We do not want the game folder archived. So we're gonna go back into the game files themselves and we're gonna press Control A on our keyboard, if we're running Windows, of course, to select all the files. And once we selected all the files, we are gonna right click if we have WinRAR installed. If you do not have WinRAR installed, just use whatever uh, archiving tool you have and go Go to add to archive. This will open up this menu over here. This is how you make an archive within WinRAR. Of course, if you do not have any archive software, you can just use Windows's, but I don't recommend it. I 
don't personally like it. Just download WinRAR from WinRAR.com and install it and after this you can make an archive. So we're gonna select the zip format for the archive and then we're gonna click OK and we're gonna wait for it to finish. It shouldn't take more than a couple minutes. Once the archive has finished, it will be placed in the same folder as the game files themselves. And we're just gonna take this archive and we're gonna drag it out to the desktop. Now, just to fix our game files, we are gonna go back to www and remove the patches.json file. We do not need this anymore. This is just for the archive itself. And then we can close the game folder and you can still play Tcall on your computer after you remove the patches.json file. So now that we've archived the game file successfully from our original and lawfully purchased copy of a T call, we are gonna need to transfer this archive to our mobile device in order to emulate it. To do this, you can do it in two ways. The first way is plugging in your mobile device to your computer if you have a data transfer cable. Now is the time to go search for your charger cable or your data transfer cable and plug it in your mobile device and then plug the cable into the computer and transfer this archive over to your phone. Uh, this should be pretty easy to do. You just need to authorize access on your mobile device. Once you plug in the cable into your computer, your phone is going to ask for permission to trust the computer. You're going to click yes, and then you can transfer the game archive over to your phone. Or if you cannot do this because you do not have a cable, you can upload this file to a cloud service of your choosing and only download the file yourself and afterwards you'll delete it off the cloud service and just use the cloud service as a middleman to transfer over the file over the internet. For me personally, I am gonna transfer the file directly to the Bluestacks app player which is an Android based software in which I'm gonna showcase the emulation part of this video. So we are gonna go over here at the file explorer and I am gonna import from my computer the actual file from our desktop. So I am importing the zip file right now. We're just gonna have to wait a couple minutes or actually just a couple seconds while it's loading. And now the zip archive has been successfully imported onto our device. So right now you're gonna need to extract the zip archive onto your device because if we send over a zip we're gonna need to unarchive it to actually make the game run so to do this we're gonna need to install an app which can actually unarchive archives on our mobile phone so to do this i've installed the rar app from google play you can just go to the play store this is the app that i personally use and recommend it has over 100 mil downloads and it's made by the people that made winrar so it is definitely legit and it is approved by google i'm gonna go into my file manager and open this file using rar we're gonna wait for rar to read the entire archive and all of the game files are in here so with the zip file loaded we're gonna go back up one level over here and we're gonna hold our finger over the coffin of andy and lele dot zip and we're gonna click on the extract to the coffin of andy and lele button which is gonna make a new folder right here and extract all the files what we're gonna do with this folder is we're gonna hold click on it and we're gonna select cut after we have selected the cut option on our folder we're gonna click on the hamburger icon right here the little bar icon on the top left and we're gonna click on the device storage this will bring us to the device storage menu and we're just gonna go to downloads and we're gonna click on the top right icon to paste the folder back in here this folder should contain all the files that we have extracted and now we can close the RAR app since we do not need it anymore. Once we have extracted the game files that we acquired from our own lawfully purchased game, we are gonna need to install the emulator to run those game files and emulate the Coffin of Andy and Layla on our mobile device. To do this, we're gonna have to open up our web browser and you're gonna have to open up the Patreon link that you'll find in the description as well. This is the Patreon page of the people that developed this emulator and this is where you can download the emulator itself and where you can support the project by donating. Anyway, we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna go to the latest post that you'll find. So this is the latest post for me at the time of recording this video. It is JoyPlay 1.20.520. This is the version that is currently released at the moment. Uh, this is just a patch note, but it also includes the download over here. So we're gonna click on view post to also see the download links. We're gonna scroll down under the post and we're gonna see JoyPlay 1.20.520. And then we're gonna click on the download. So this is the download of the emulator software 
password right here. Now we're gonna go to the top right of the website and to the little dot icons. After you click on these, you'll see that the download option is available. So we're just gonna click on the download option over here. Wait for this to decrypt. We're gonna click continue for the file to download. You might get a warning that this file might be harmful. This is just a false positive. So now I'm gonna click the download anyway button and the file has been downloaded. We're gonna click open and now we are at the JoyPlay install menu. Depending on the type of device that you have, at this moment you might encounter an error that's saying that you cannot install apps from unknown sources and that you have to allow unknown source installations in your settings before continuing. So you're gonna have to enable the unknown sources settings before you can install this as this app is not officially in the Google Play Store. So just just allow the app to be installed and then you can click on the install button. So I just clicked on the install button and the app just installed. And after the app has installed, we're gonna click on open and we have successfully installed the JoyPlay. You'll now see the welcome to JoyPlay menu, a couple introductionary sentences right here talking about JoyPlay itself. JoyPlay is just an emulator for RPG Maker games and this is just emulation. It is lawful. Now we're gonna accept the terms and conditions of JoyPlay and then go back to the next menu, which is the privacy policy and also accept that one and now we need to give joyplay its file permissions in order to actually read the game files so we're gonna click allow twice and after this you'll be greeted by the initial install menu which says the version and the license alongside the other developers that worked on this shout out to all these people we're gonna click out of this menu by just clicking out of the box and we have successfully installed the JoyPlay. Now, the last step to running the Tico game itself is just clicking on the plus button, selecting the add game button. Now, JoyPlay will request for you to select the executable file for starting the game. We'll click choose and we will go to the downloads folder. This is the folder that we extracted the game in. We will see the game folder right here, the coffin of Andy and Lele, and then we will select the game.exe file. After this, we'll click choose and the game name will show up over here, the coffin of Andy and Lele. We will not change this. We're going to click next. This will ask you for the version of the game. You do not need to change this. You can just press next. This will choose the game icon. It is automatically chosen as the T -Cole icon. You do not need to change this. Let's press next. And then T -Cole has been installed. If we want to start playing, we can just click on this icon right here. And Tico has successfully started, but it is very loud, so I had to turn that volume down. I'm sorry for that. Anyway, let me show you the controls within this game. You have the up, down, right, left for actually moving within the map. You have a couple buttons here that will help you. So if the game requests you to press these keys, this is uh, the input that will be sent. It will be based on the actual keyboard keys that you press. Control left and shift left are special keys. Control left does nothing while shift left allows you to shift and run faster in the game. You can switch out the buttons over here for new ones if you just click on this bottom right icon. This will give you W, A, S, V, C, and D keys. These do not do much besides movement as T. Cole doesn't use many keys for gameplay anyway. Uh, there's the escape key for closing out of menus. F8 just does nothing as F8 usually brings the game into full screen, but we are ready into full screen. The F2 button brings up the FPS and the frame input delay, which is 1ms because the game is running at a constant 60 FPS, which is good. This is mainly used for debugging and seeing how the game runs on your mobile device. And then there's the enter key, which actually allows you to select options within game menus and interact with stuff. So we've just clicked into a new game. Remember that you can always hide these controls and scenes that have a lot of dialogue. So you can only bring them up when you need to actually play the game by moving around, interacting with stuff. And and you can hide and show these buttons by clicking on the bottom arrow right here on the screen. So I've hit the buttons because we actually just need to click the screen to go through dialogue. We don't really need to move around or anything. So I'm going to go through the dialogue right here by just clicking the screen. And we have got through the initial phase right here. Good morning, Ashley. I'm going to keep clicking a bit so we can actually get to some movement gameplay. I'm going to bring up the movement keys. And if you press on the buttons right here, as you can see, you can move. If I want to interact with stuff, you can press the enter button. So I'm going to go to Andrew right here and give him the tomato soup can just to show you that the game works. So 
As you can clearly see, the game works fine. I don't really need to go through the whole game just to show you that this works. All right, so now we're done with this. For example, if I wanted to go back to the main menu, I can just click the escape button, go down to save because we wanna save our gameplay. I'm gonna click enter to save the game and then quit. So if I ever wanted to load my save files, I can go to continue, load the save file from here, everything works as normal, and I can just quit the game by going to the quit the game option. The emulator that we're using does not recognize the game closing and it just leaves you with a blank screen. So if you just wanna close the game, you can actually just close the emulator app or you can click on the top arrow right here and then on the X button. Do you really want to close the game? Yes, and then it will just close the game. And that's pretty much it. It is a pretty annoying process to just install it in the first place, but once you have installed it, you can enjoy it on your phone, wherever you want, on the go. It doesn't require a computer nearby, it doesn't require Steam Link, it's just a simple process of porting it and emulating it on your mobile device fully legally using your lawful purchased copy copy of Tico. Please do not pirate this game. You install it lawfully, just how I did it in this video, for educational purposes only, and just do it legally, please. All right, thank you for watching. Uh, here's another video for you to watch. You're definitely gonna like this one. Just check it out, please, I beg you. And uh, have a great rest of your day. I'm out.